okay folks I trust you're all well I'm not sh I'm not sure whether you're you've joined me yet or not or whether you're you're listening in um, if you are give me a wave or, or write a wee comment I'd love to hear from you I'd love to see see you that you're you're uh, with us and I trust you've had a good day and the Lord has blessed you um, so it's it's been a beautiful day I'm back in my study again this evening and uh, it's a bit quieter up here and uh, and it's lovely to be able to join you tonight um, for our Bible study and of course remember that straight afterward is uh, we're going to try this new uh, connection with Zoom uh, and, and Gary thank you Gary and Diane for that and for setting this up and so I think you've been sent a wee um, uh, a wee uh, text message through through WhatsApp a wee link and all you have to do is uh, connect to that wee link whenever we're finished and we'll be able to chat together and to pray together so I'm looking forward to that and then remember on Sunday Friday night Friday night's Good Friday at 8 p.m. and uh, our brother James is going to be bringing us God's word and so please remember that uh, Friday night at 8 p.m. So please tune in uh, to Facebook or YouTube. Um, it'll be downloaded on YouTube. So remember that on Friday night as we remember the Lord uh, in, uh, in Good Friday. And I always find Good Friday uh, to be reflective, a time for us just to contemplate and to think about his death uh, on the cross for us. And then on Sunday then, uh, we look forward to Resurrection Sunday, and we uh, and so I'm excited. I've just been working on that uh, this last couple of days. I'm not finished yet, uh, and I'm hoping on Sunday night to maybe bring a wee word as well. Um, I'm not sure yet uh, what that will be, but we're hoping to uh, bring a wee word on Sunday night with it being Easter Sunday as well. So please remember that twelve. Um, noon on Sunday morning and then 7 p.m. probably on Sunday evening again and and we're in for a treat this Lord's Day because uh, we've got Testify singing uh, we have uh, Joanne singing um, and, and so and so we look forward to that the other thing I thought about this morning it's amazing the sort of things we think about when we're lying in bed do you ever find yourself lying in bed just thinking about stuff? Uh, and I was lying in bed this morning uh, early listening to the birds singing and, and I thought wouldn't it be lovely on Sunday morning, on resurrection morning, if, if some of us, I know all of us wouldn't feel comfortable with this, but some of us might, to, to put together a wee recording just saying together uh, good morning church family or good morning uh, new dawn family or, or something very very simple like that and uh, just to record it send it through to Gary and uh, so that we can uh, put this all together and then on Sunday morning then we're all greeting each other uh, I just thought that would be nice I don't know what your thoughts are on that but but I think it would be lovely for us as a church family because if you're like me you're feeling the isolation the walls are closing in and you're missing one another. I know that I'm missing you guys, my church family, um, and uh, and and it'd be lovely for us just to be able to to. I know we're going to hopefully talk to each other through Zoom here this evening, but I thought on Sunday morning, Resurrection morning, that we could greet one another uh, as we as we listen to God's word. So there's a thought for us anyway. Let me read. Uh, another psalm, Psalm 136, Psalm 136, and I've entitled this psalm, His Steadfast Love Endures Forever. Isn't that the truth? And so let's listen to God's word. This is a great psalm for us to think about tonight on this Passion Week, this Holy Week, as we think about his steadfast love. Psalm 136. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of gods, 
for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. And then down verse 23, who remembered us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever, and rescued us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever, who gives food to all our flesh, to all flesh, sorry, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 26 then ends with this, O oh, give thanks to the, to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. And so, and so throughout this whole psalm, we, we, are, we are instructed to respond to God. We are instructed to respond to this psalm and we're instructed to give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because of his mercy, or that is his steadfast love which endures forever. Well, let me pray uh, just before we look at this psalm together. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you uh, for being with us uh, today. We thank you again for your amazing love. We thank you again for your amazing grace. We thank you that you are a merciful God. And as your people, we can say tonight that we are truly blessed. We are blessed tonight through your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so now we pray together that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, during the last few weeks, um, we have been encouraged to go outside our homes and to applaud the NHS and, and to say thank you. And, and rightly so, um, because, because of all that they are, are doing for us at the moment, especially, uh, we are indebted to them and we want to give God thanks for them. Uh, for um, standing up and being accounted uh, during this time of crisis, during this time of this coronavirus. So, so rightly so, we, we, we applaud the NHS, we give thanks to God for them. The thought came to me this week, um, how often do we take time to give thanks to the Lord? That's the thought that came to me um, on Monday. Uh, it was as I thought about tonight how often do we give thanks to the Lord as we think about the Lord Jesus this week in particular as we come up to Good Friday now in a couple of days and then Easter Sunday Resurrection Sunday are we a thankful people that's the question are we thankful for who Christ is and all that he has done for us well, I think Psalm 136 is one of those psalms that helps us to remember the person and the reasons for our thankfulness. And so this psalm um, will help us to, to never forget and to focus or to refocus, if you like, on the Lord who is full of mercy and grace and love. The context of this psalm is probably the dedication of Solomon's temple, which we find in 2 Chronicles 5 to 7. Uh, and it appears uh, that this psalm was also sung by God's people returning to Jerusalem um, after their time of captivity in Babylon. Uh, and we see that in Jeremiah 33 verses 10 and 11. Thus says the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place of which you say it is desolate without man and without beast in the cities of, Ju of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without habitant um, and without beast. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, praise the Lord of hosts, for he is good.
for his mercy endures forever. And of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause the captives of the land to return as at the first says the Lord. Isn't, it, isn't this wonderful? And so Psalm 136 is a song of thanksgiving. Uh, it's a song of thanksgiving unto the Lord because of his mercy, because of his steadfast love, which endures forever. I think the Apostle Paul also gives us the meaning behind God's steadfast love. We find that in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, Paul says? Shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we shall we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him, that is through Christ, who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor darkness, or powers, or things present, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything, create, or any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you hear what Paul's saying, brothers and sisters? Isn't this incredible? He's saying now that nothing, absolutely nothing now in heaven and on earth or in, in the created, in the universe, in the created order can separate you, can rob you of God's love, which is found and fulfilled in Christ. This is why his love, his amazing incredible love will endure forever four thoughts for us very simple tonight here's thought number one the basis of God's steadfast love verses one to three the basis of God's steadfast love here in these first three verses we are encouraged to give thanks to the Lord notice the three times verse one verse two and verse three oh give thanks to the Lord, the psalmist tells us. Why? Because of who God is. Because of who he is. Verse 1, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is good. What is the psalmist telling us here? Because God is good all the time, because there is no evil in his nature or in his character, you and I can be completely sure that his love will never fail us. He will love you and I forever and forever. The word for love is hesed here. And so this is the Lord. You see the Lord in capitals. This is the covenant name of, of God, Yahweh. And so this is Yahweh's special covenant covenantal everlasting unfailing love for you and for me is hesed love remember who god is here's the second reason that we are to give thanks to him verse two give thanks to the to the god of gods for his mercy or his steadfast love endures forever and so the psalmist is telling us here that God is unique. He is unique. There is no one like him. There is no, there is no other God besides him. Um, um, uh, there, is no, there is one true God in heaven tonight. And, and, and we're to worship him. And he is one God in three persons. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. All, the, all other gods are nothing. They are dead, lifeless idols compared to the God that we worship tonight. And even though God is unique and even though God is beyond us, he has revealed himself to us. Isn't it wonderful? God hasn't left us to grope about in this world in the darkness and in our sin, in our fallen 
sinful state, but God has stooped low. He has come to us in the person of his son. He has come to us in creation and he has come to us even tonight through his written word, his living word. And so give thanks to the Lord. And thirdly, verse 3, give thanks to the, to the Lord of Lords. His mercy endures forever or steadfast love endures forever. This again speaks about his reign and his rule over all things and especially over our lives tonight. Isn't that incredible? And I think we need to be reminded of that in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of this coronavirus again, as we've said over these last weeks, in the midst of this crisis, in the, in the midst of the uncertainty of our future and so on and so forth, it is good to remind ourselves that he is the Lord of Lords. It is good to remind ourselves that he is reigning supreme tonight over all things and over our lives. I need to hear that and I guess so do you. He is the sovereign Lord. This is why Paul again was able to say in Romans 8, 28, and we know, Paul writes, that all things work together for good to those who love him and to those who are the called according to his purpose. And so, dear friends, brothers and sisters, loved ones, God does not have a plan B. He doesn't need it. He is in complete control and he is fulfilling his purposes out for our good, for your good and for his glory. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Notice also verse 26. And, and I guess this is the fourth time now. And remember in verses 1 and 3 we're instructed to give thanks and now right at the very end. So it begins with praise and it ends with praise. And so the very last verse, verse 26, we're instructed to give thanks to the God of heaven. Why? For his, again, his mercy endures forever. Or his steadfast love endures forever. We're to give thanks to him. Why? Because he is the God of glory. Now, he is the God of glory, the God of heaven. And this reminds us that God is eternal. It reminds us that God is infinite. It reminds us that God is unchanging in his love, in his goodness, in his power, his wisdom, and he is, and in his sovereign rule over all our lives. And so he is the God of glory, the God of heaven, the God who continues to hold us. The God who continues to carry us. The God who continues to watch over us. The God who continues to shield us and protect us. The God who continues to keep us in his steadfast love through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't this the gospel? Isn't this the truth that we need to to, to to feed our souls and to strengthen our faith tonight. And so not only does God continue to hold us in a steadfast love, but God by a spirit applies his love so that you and I can love him back with thankfulness and with grateful hearts. Isn't that amazing? His steadfast covenant love for us Brothers and sisters will never feel, it will never fade, and it will never perish over time. And so the psalmist instructs us tonight, in the midst of this Passion Week, this Holy Week leading up to Easter, oh, give thanks to the Lord. We want to do that tonight, don't we? So this is the basis of God's steadfast love. He is good. He is the God of gods, the Lord of lords and the God of heaven. Secondly, the place of God's steadfast love, the place of his steadfast love. 
verses 4 to 9. Now the psalmist points us to creation. Uh, and listen how the Apostle Paul puts it in Romans 1, verse 20 and 21. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. That's God's invisible attributes uh, are been clearly seen, been understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. That is you and I. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and were foolish and their foolish hearts were darkened. And so what does Paul tell us here tonight? Because God has revealed himself through his wonderful creation, humanity tonight will stand before him without excuse on the last day. Humanity will become forgetful rather than thankful. They will become futile in their thoughts and they will become foolish in their hearts. And this means that they will face the wrath of God to come in their sinful state. And so that's why it is so important, brothers and sisters, loved ones, that we pray for our unseen. That's why it is so important that we come together and we pray earnestly, fervently for those in our families, for those that we work with, for those that we know who are in darkness tonight, who are under the condemnation of God, according to the word of God. That we pray that God in his grace would save them just as he has done for us. Well, in this psalm, David wants us to admire God's handiwork. He wants us to see his beauty. He wants us to see his character. He wants us to see his greatness and all the things that he has made in creation for his good pleasure and for ours. And so to him who by understanding made the heavens, the psalmist says, to him who spread out the earth above the waters, to him who made the great lights, that is the sun uh, to rule over the day and the moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Forever. What is the psalmist doing here? He is getting us to observe God's great wonders, God's handiwork, verse 4, so that we would be filled with confidence in his steadfast love. Um, I'm sure, like me, um, you have been enjoying these these beautiful mornings, these beautiful days that we've been having. And wasn't this morning just glorious? And so Heather and I went out for a walk along the Cackerty Road, the, the Cackerty Road, and 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 it was just lovely. The birds were singing, um, and just to be able to be in creation, to be in nature. And just to admire God's handiwork, to see his creation, to see the beauty around us. Even, even though this world has fallen today and even though we're under the curse of God because of our sin, we still get to see a glimpse of the beauty of God, the majesty of God, the splendour of God. We still get to see just his handiwork and how the, 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 the green grass now growing, the the flowers now blooming and the trees now growing and, 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 and so it was wonderful. And for this reason, and, for, and God made all this and God made his creation. He, he made all of this with, with a purpose. He made it all um, to have order. Uh, and so behind everything that God has made, there is a reason, there is purpose, there is order. Because God is all wise. He is the true creator of all things. And that is why we can praise him and magnify him this evening. Um, 
Whenever I was a boy, you'll laugh at me now. Whenever I was a boy, I loved to watch uh, Woody the Woodpecker. Um, I'm sure you're giggling now, but do you remember? Do you remember as a as a child uh, watching Woody the Woodpecker? Do you remember? Um, I, I'm nearly tempted to to make the noise that he would make. You know, whenever he came on TV. Um, uh, I just love Woody the Wood. I used to laugh. He, he, he was hilarious, and uh, and uh, and I thought about I thought about the woodpecker this morning when I was out for a walk. It's, it's amazing the things we think about. But wh why? Here's the question: Why doesn't the woodpecker knock uh, knock their brains out every time they they bang their their little beaks? Um, against the tree, against this hard wood, you know, wh why, why, why do they knock? Uh, why do they not knock their 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 little brains out? Uh, you imagine the force that it takes to 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 constantly uh, just chip and chip and chip. You imagine they're going like a like a drill, just constantly chipping away, drilling away into uh, into the tree. Uh, well, well, I, I, I'm led to believe that the reason why they they don't knock their brains out is because because of this small uh, membrane, because of this, it's a like a like a cushion, like a pad, like a shock absorber uh, between their beaks and between their brains, between their 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 tiny little heads, uh, and, and so every time they're knocking their 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 pan in, if you like, every time they're drilling away into the tree. This 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 little membrane, this little shock absorber, is protecting them, and and doesn't this just remind us of how good and how wise our God is? Every detail, every detail, uh, God has thought of it, and God has implemented it uh, for for our good and for His glory. And so allow the steadfast love of the Lord to fill you tonight with, with confidence and with praise and with wonder. So the basis of God's steadfast love, the place of God's steadfast love, creation. And then thirdly, think about the display, the display of God's steadfast love. Verses 10 to 22 here. I thought about I thought about my favorite verse that I learned as a boy, John three and verse sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, will not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us. The display of God's steadfast love. And so the psalmist David here wants us to look at God's redemptive work. And he gives us two great events that happened in the Old Testament. And so in verses 10 to 16, uh, uh, we have the deliverance of God's people from slavery in Egypt. And then in verses 17 to 22, we have their successful conquest of the land. The successful conquest of the land. And so verse 21. And he gave their land as a heritage for his mercy. His steadfast love endures forever. And of course all this finds its fulfilment in the finished work of Christ. We look to the cross tonight, don't we? We, 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 we look to, to Christ. On the cross, we, we, we see his obedient life, we see his death and resurrection, we, we see his triumph over sin and death and hell and Satan. And now, and now we are reminded of an inheritance that is ours, kept for us in heaven. Uh, and, and, and we're given a new home, we're, we're, given, a new, uh, we're given a new earth. That, that awaits us through Christ who loves us and gave himself for us. Isn't it wonderful, brothers and sisters, that you and I have this wonderful inheritance 
that you and I know what it is to have our sins forgiven tonight. You and I know what it is to be delivered from our from our sins, from slavery, from bondage. We know what it is to be given new life. Um, and so, and so, give thanks to the Lord. Doesn't God's perfect redemption through His precious Son? Doesn't it give us cause, great cause, to rejoice and be thankful tonight? Before we were lost in sin, we were blind, blinded by, by our sins. We were in darkness because of our sins. But because of the Lord's steadfast love on the cross, we are now forgiven, redeemed. Give thanks to the Lord, the psalmist tells us. I have one final thought then, and it's this. The encouragement of God's steadfast love. Do you see what the psalmist tells us here? Now he wants to encourage us. So we've saw the basis of his love. We have saw the, the place of his love. We have saw the, the display of his love. On Calvary's cross, if you like, we have saw his wonderful plan of redemption worked out on Calvary. As we come into a Good Friday and Easter Sunday, oh, give thanks to the Lord and be encouraged tonight. The encouragement of God's steadfast love. Who remembered us in our lowly state for his mercy endures forever and rescued us from our enemies for his mercy endures forever who gives food to all flesh for his mercy endures forever notice the three things that jump out in these verses three great truths one verse 23 he remembered us two verse 24 he rescued us and verse 25 he provides for us isn't isn't this a, a wonderful psalm for us to meditate upon on this Passion Week. God remembered us in our lowly state. What does this mean, brothers and sisters? In our weakness or in our weaknesses, God remembered us. And so just as God remembered his people living in Babylon living in weakness, away from loved ones, away from family, just like us tonight, in our, in our self-isolation, God will remember you in your weakness. And so be encouraged tonight, loved ones. During this difficult time, when we would be with loved ones over this holiday period, over this Easter time when we, we get time to spend with family, with loved ones, with friends. And now we can't this year. Remember tonight that God remembers you in your weakness. He will hear your cry for mercy and he will deliver you. He will deliver us. He, he is the God who has rescued us from all our enemies spiritually. And he will one day rescue us physically. Physically. And if that isn't good enough, your loving, good, heavenly Father will provide for you now and forever. What does he say here? He is the God who will feed you. And sustain you again physically and spiritually. Psalm 37 verse 25 says that he will never see his children begging for bread. And so therefore be encouraged tonight brothers and sisters. Remember back to what we said right at the beginning of this from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus' sermon on the mount where he tells us not to worry. Why? Because our Heavenly Father knows what we're in need of. He knows what we need. He knows what you need tonight. He will never see his children begging for bread. And so he, and so here in the psalm, uh, um, we are reminded that he is the God who will feed us and sustain us physically and spiritually. 
He will never see his children begging for bread. And then Psalm 55 and 22, cast your burden or cast all your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful, brothers and sisters? Cast your burden on the Lord tonight. Cast your burdens on him. Cast all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties, all your problems on him. And he will sustain you now and forever. And he will never permit the righteous to be moved. That's how sure and certain our salvation is in Christ. Our lives are secure in him. And so be encouraged, loved ones. Keep looking up. Look up tonight. And give thanks to the Lord. Look to the cross tonight as we come to Good Friday. Look to the cross and see Jesus hanging on that cross. Dying for our sins. Dying for our justification. For our glorification. And give thanks tonight. Give thanks unto our God. For he is a good God. Allow his steadfast love to fill you with an unshakable confidence in him. Will you do that tonight? And so, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good. And his steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. And so may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord continue to sustain you and strengthen you and help you and carry you. And may he encourage you tonight in his steadfast love, his mercy, his grace will endure forever. So thank you for listening and may the Lord bless you. And so... If we don't see you on Zoom now, uh, then uh, God willing we'll see you on Friday night as we look to the cross of Christ again on Good Friday. And as we reflect and think about all that Christ means to us and all that Christ has done for us. And then on Easter Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection for we serve a risen, exalted Lord Jesus today who's not only in the world but he is with us tonight. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. Thank you for listening and we'll see you on Zoom in, in a few moments.